What's good, culturalists? It's your man CJ Williams with another tank-related video from my fellow No Limit soldiers out there. Have you ever wondered what happened to some of the more prominent acts on No Limit? For this video, we'll revisit the massive year that was 1998 and go in order of album release to give you an update on what happened to said artist. Wait until you see what Kane and Abel got going on now. They released 23 albums on the label that year, so that's pretty much everybody who was anybody on the roster. But for the one or two notable acts that didn't drop, we'll have an update for them too. Without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, technically not a No Limit soldier, well at least not for long. Bleed only had one release on the label, the fan favorite My Balls and My Word. The remix to his single How You Do That did get placement on the I'm Bout It soundtrack, but Bleed wouldn't be featured on any other No Limit projects. Don't think that many stopped making music though. The Baton Rouge MC would release eight albums bouncing around different labels, even making a brief stop on Tech 9 Strange Music. His last project was in 2020 with Signs and Wonders. Despite being on what he thought to be was good terms with P, having spoken with him in 2018, Bleed made zero appearances on the No Limit tour. Not sure what that was about, but a cameo from him on a stop or two would have been dope as hell. After a successful run on his older brother's label, Silk stayed on for the short-lived and forgettable new No Limit records. Once that folded, he continued to make music independently with his last joint dropping in 2018 titled It Will All Make Sense Later. Nowadays, you can catch the youngest Miller sibling supporting his son, Victorious Miller, a four-star recruit who just committed to the University of Oregon. Silk has a son getting ready for college. You feel old yet? After dropping four albums under the tank, C. Murder would branch off with his own imprint, True Records. He recruited other artists like Magic to join him, fresh off a new deal with Priority Records. Unfortunately, he would only release two albums under said deal before he was arrested and found guilty of murder. Despite multiple appeals, even some celebrity help from Brother Master P and Kim Kardashian of all people, C is still locked up serving a life sentence. He's still been able to release music, however, going now by C. Miller, for obvious reasons, dropping six solo albums since his incarceration. For more information surrounding his case, check out the docuseries Reasonable Doubt, Season 2, Episode 3. It's streaming right now on HBO Max. He's maintained his innocence this whole time, and there's a strong possibility he may know who is responsible. But like he says in that docuseries, he'll never say. Let me tell you something, I ain't gonna never hear nothing come out my mouth hurting the thing at nobody else. Not even to my own soul. That just ain't gonna happen. It's a very interesting watch. After releasing their one and done No Limit album, the four-man singing group Sons of Funk would retire the following year. Talk about grand opening, grand closing. Well, actually, they would reunite 15 plus years later in 2014, dropping an album the following year. They haven't released much music since, so it looks like the reunion was short-lived as well. If you're interested though, you can catch them doing performances every now and then. Check out their Instagram for dates. After dropping two of the best albums in No Limit history, yes, that top 10 No Limit albums list is on the way, Mr. Get It On Jones would leave the label in 2000 to start Fiend Entertainment. He would release an independent album that same year, but that wasn't the biggest news to come from 2000 for him. Do you remember he signed to Rough Riders that same year as well? He would make an appearance on a song or two, produce a few, and do some writing here and there, but never released any solo projects before he left the label a year later. Ever since, Fiend has had a pretty successful indie run, including his collab with 360 Mafia the Headbusters. Yes, that Hypnotized Minds list is on the way too. Gotta finish this project pat first. Capital FI is currently signed to Currency's Jet Life label and released new music as recently as 2023, making him one of the very few artists post No Limit still actively dropping music in present day. After releasing two albums on the label, the artist formerly known as Magnolia Slim would have a falling out with label head Master P, leading to his departure. Slim, like many other former Tank Dogs, would go the indie route, dropping two albums on his Cutthroat Committee imprint. But right as his biggest record was about to drop, his life was cut short after he was murdered in his mother's yard November 2003. Slow Motion featuring Juvenile would drop March the following year, and it was a smash. The barbecue staple would make Slim only the sixth artist in history to have a number one record after their death. If you would like to know more surrounding the details of his passing, check out Hip Hop Homicides on Wee TV. Episode 5 featured the story of the From What I Was Told rapper and is available on demand if you're an Xfinity user. As of the time of this recording, no arrests have been made. Rest in peace to Soldier Slim. Introduced to P by Kane and Abel, the Detroit singer-slash-rapper Mercedes signed to the tank in the mid-1990s. Her album would finally release after what felt like an eternity of teasing to mild success with a joint or two catching on. Much like her fellow R&B counterpart, Sons of Funk, 
she too would retire almost immediately after dropping. Not much has been said about Mercedes since, well except that odd back and forth between P and Charlemagne on The Breakfast Club. Uh, except for Mercedes, we never saw that and I always wanted to see that because she had a fat ass. Yeah, see that, bro. Hold Wait. up, man. Don't, don't, don't talk about Mercedes. Oh, like my bad. That. I ain't know she's yeah, family. It's so though, disrespectful. Nah, she ain't family, <laughs> but still, though, with all my people, man, you know how I am. Yeah. Yeah, but you, you, we good, man. I ain't no, you know what I'm saying? You know how we get out. Yeah. Despite rumors of her being a lawyer, she has confirmed that that's not true, although she does own a clothing line and plans on putting out music soon. Depending on the city, if you made it out to the No Limit reunion tour, you may have caught a glimpse of her performing her classic single, I Can Tell. The Colonel would continue to make music well after the shine had worn off of his once platinum plated tank. 14 albums and double digit mixtapes later, P would hang up the microphone after 2018's Tony Mantana project. In between time, he would appear in several movies and TV programs, including a Nickelodeon show of all things, and a four year run on the reality show Growing Up Hip Hop. Let us know in the comments if you had the Ice Cream Man dancing with the stars on your 2006 bingo card. In addition to stepping away from the mic, he also closed the booth for anyone else, pretty much distant himself from anything music related, instead focusing on selling a variety of products from, uh, well, we'll let him tell it. Mr. Yeah. Ice Cream, man, we got our own ice cream, the King Kong and Energy drink. It says make him say, uh, on yep. it. <laughs> <laughs> Hootie Hoo cereal. Okay, we, we see those. Keep going. Yep, yep. I got the bacon soda in case you want to bake some. Bacon oh, soda. Yeah. In his words, product outweighs talent. Hard to argue with that. Let us know if you own a pair of Magnatis or tried any of his grocery items down in the comments. I might have to order some stuff and do a taste test with Q on our next live. Anyway, when he's not pushing pancake mix, you can catch P supporting his sons, Hersey and Mercy's hoop dreams at the University of Houston and Notre Dame High School, respectively. 1999 would be a very active year for Kane and Abel. After dropping two solid projects on No Limit, the twins from New York left in 1999 to, wait for it, start their own label. They made their last appearance on the tank via the Foolish soundtrack, then dropped their sleeper project Rise to Power on their most wanted imprint. They would even release a novel entitled Eyes of a Killer Behind Enemy Lines. Like we said, very very active 1999. We'd get two more albums before the brothers would get caught up in a fed case against New Orleans drug lord Richard Pena. Well, long story short, the FEDs tried to get the twins to flip on Pena and also Master P. They would do neither and instead plead guilty to drug possession with intent to distribute. They spent three years behind bars slowing up their rap career. They would get out and drop their seventh and final album in 2010. So what have they been up to these days? Well, a quick jump over to at Dan Garcia Productions on Instagram, and you'll peep one of the brothers is now a two-time Emmy-nominated TV and film producer. Tell me if you saw that coming. McKinley Phillips, better known as Mac, dropped two classic albums and was one of the few soldiers to stick around into 2000. He would be featured on the 504 Boys hit Wobble Wobble that year. Unfortunately, his career would come to a screeching halt in 2001 as he was convicted of manslaughter and sentenced to a 30 piece behind bars. Like C Murder, the camouflage assassin has maintained his innocence and also like C, he has an episode on reasonable doubt detailing his situation. It's season one, episode one, and there's evidence that basically proves he wasn't the shooter. It's a must see for any No Limit fan. Mac would get released in June of 2021 after serving 20 years. He's since released an album titled Son of the City in 2022 and made guest appearances at several reunion tour stops. Releasing three commercially and mostly critical successful albums on the label, Snoop would bounce after his last meal LP in 2000. Since then, he's dropped 14 solo albums, including reggae and gospel projects, on his way to becoming arguably the most recognizable rapper of all time. The Snoop rebrand is one of legends. From cooking shows with Martha Stewart to sneakers by Skechers, the dog can be seen pitching any product you can think of, including cereal, which Q and I tried. Not bad, but the name Snoop Cereal is a miss, especially when Snoop Loops was right there. Receiving his own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2018, the D.O.Double-G had a full circle moment in 2022 when he acquired his old label Death Row Records. Yep, Snoop now owns the label he used to call home. It's crazy, right? An original member of TRU, Ed had been down with the tank since day one. After dropping his one and done sleeper, The Assassin, the Richmond Cali MC would depart the label in 2000. His second album, Special Forces, would drop under his own label of the same name later that year. Unfortunately, that would be Ed's last project while alive. He passed away in 2001 from lymphoma cancer. A posthumous project would drop the following month. Rest in peace to Big Ed. 
first appearing on Down South Hustlers, Skull would drop two albums during his tenure as a soldier, 96's Hoodlum for Life and 98's These Wicked Streets. Skull decided to leave the label in 99 for Indie Pastures and released two more projects, Third Ward Stepper and Controversy in 2003 respectively. Disappearing from the scene shortly after, Skull would reappear in the news but not to promote a project. In 2011, he was sent to prison on child pornography charges. Facing 20 years, he was sentenced to six. He claimed he was framed. Not much has been published about Duggery since, until June of 2022, when family confirmed he had passed away. Skull Duggery was 51 years old. Making his first appearance on C Murder's Life or Death album, Magic was one of, if not the first act to sign to C's True Records, a sub-label to No Limit. Three albums later, Magic would leave No Limit in 2003 to release his fourth and final project, On My Own. He found mild success in 04 when he linked up with pro boxer turned rapper Roy Jones Jr. for the banger I Smoke I Drink. He would bounce around a label or two before forming his own Banks Entertainment in 2011, but would never release anything. March 1st, 2013, Mr. Magic Magic and his wife Chastity would be killed in a traffic accident in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. The rapper's 12-year-old daughter, who was also in the vehicle, would be the lone survivor of the crash. Magic was 37 years old. The three-man group consisting of Glock, New Nine, and Uzi, collectively known as Prime Suspects, like many other artists, left shortly after their one and only release. The group would disband shortly after with New Nine taking his talents to True Records briefly. Allegedly, he was present when the incident with C Murder went down in the club. He too would get incarcerated in the late 20s tens before passing away after his release. Not much is known regarding the other two members as we couldn't find any music since their No Limit days. One quick fun fact, member Glock used to go by Gangsta T. Fans of the Down South Hustler compilation will recognize that name from the classic Bounce That Ass. He's got the last verse. Back-to-back -back group releases in 98, this time courtesy of the quartet, the Gambino family. Similar to Prime Suspects, only one album was released on the label before the group broke up, and two members would also jump over to see Murder's True Records. Malachi and Reginelli would form their own group called Young Guns and be featured on a handful of records in 99 and 2000. Fino would continue to make music, but unfortunately would pass away in 2021. There's actually a music video for his Melf Made Me record that has footage of his funeral if you want to check it out. The last and likely most well-known member, Gotti can be seen doing interviews every now and then and has a book on the way, so salute to him. Signing to No Limit in 1995, Mamma Mia was an integral part of the success in the mid to late 90s for The Tank. She released three albums during her tenure with a fourth on the way. The only No Limit artist with two soldier songs, Sister Stories was supposed to release November 16th, 1999, but Mia would take some time off after the passing of her mother, father, and grandmother in the same year. She would reemerge in 01 with a renewed energy and an August 2001 release date. Unfortunately for fans, the project would never drop. The ghetto Sara Lee would fall back from the limelight for a while, getting into real estate, releasing a cookbook, and ghostwriting here and there. She popped out in 2014 and 15 with a pair of singles, but no full project. It was revealed in the 2010s she had been diagnosed with uterine cancer, a battle she is still fighting. Much love to Mia, keep pushing. One of the few groups to drop more than one album, Steady Mob and Left after their 98 album debuted at 82 on the Billboard 200. They would leave but still make music, releasing Crime Buddies and Espionage in 01 and 03 respectively before breaking up. Member Billy Bathgate would change his name to Just Bathgate and sign to Mac Dre's Thiz Entertainment. He is currently still very active, having 30 albums under his belt. Unfortunately, the last reports of his partner, Crooked Eye, didn't look so great. As of 2019, he was allegedly living in a homeless encampment in the Oakland area. He has an Instagram account, but it's private. If anyone can confirm or deny those reports, please feel free to do so in the comments. Originally featured on the Down South Hustlers compilation, The Hound, aka Full Blooded, was another one and done artist on the label. Despite being low key solid, the album would be a commercial failure. P would scrap the group effort Full had loaded up featuring his group, The Hounds from Gert Town. Not much has been heard from Soldier Slim's first cousin in the years since, with the exception of a music video he dropped in 21 under the name Hound. The fiery MC Mystical released three commercially and critically successful albums on No Limit before exiting in 2000. The artist born Michael Tyler had the best post-tank career for any soldier not named Snoop Dogg. Well, up until a certain point. Before he would get into legal trouble, Mystical released two albums, both featuring big radio smashes, garnering him two Grammy nominations. In 02, he was featured on the banger Move Bitch from Ludacris and Little John's I Don't Give a Fuck. The following year, his momentum came to a halt when he was indicted on sexual battery and extortion 
extortion charges. After serving his full six-year sentence, he would be released in 2010. Attempting to salvage his career, he would appear on a handful of records and drop a single on his new label home, Cash Money. No album ever materialized, and Mystical would get locked up again in 2022, this time for domestic abuse, battery, and first-degree rape. He is currently being held without bail as he awaits trial. If convicted, he faces a mandatory life sentence. Yo, that's it for the soldiers who dropped in 1998. Here's a quick update on notable acts that didn't release in this time period though. Having known P since high school, Mr. Servon dropped two projects on the tank before making his last appearance on Mercedes' Rear End album. He disbanded in 99 to start his own Lifetime Entertainment. In the years since, he's released eight projects with the most recent dropping in 2015. He did release a 20th anniversary edition of his Slept On debut life insurance with interludes between each song, detailing the stories of how each track came about. It's pretty dope. Serve is pretty active on social media as well, taking the IG to drop knowledge almost daily. One of the few success stories for No Limit in the 2000s, Peace on Little Romeo will release three albums under the label from 01 to 04. Taking his talents to Hollywood, Rome has several acting roles under his belt in movies and television, including a 53 episode run of his own show on Nickelodeon. In 07, Romeo would receive a scholarship to play ball at the University of Southern California. He will play two years with the Trojans, do more films, return to music in 2019, and father two kids. That's it for today's video. Let us know if you're feeling the new concept and if so what label do you want to see us do next we've got a ton of no limit content on the channel so peep these rankings here if you're new and as always it's your man cj williams signing out for the culture peace